days when I want to find the perfect words. I'll just say what I always feel. I love you and proud of you and you mean the world to me with loving congratulations on them. Be kind, work hard, keep honest, stay loyal, travel often, never stop learning, give thanks, love unconditionally, have fun, and always remember to smile. I love you, Matt.
Everyone, please rise and welcome the bride. Welcome. We are gathered here today to celebrate one of life's greatest moments, to give recognition to the worth and beauty of love, and to add our best wishes to the words that Matthew and Emma have chosen to unite them in marriage. The bond and covenant of marriage was established by God in creation, and our Lord Jesus Christ approved this manner of life by his presence and first miracle out of all places. A wedding. In fact, the church is called the Bride of Christ, and Holy Scripture commends marriage to be honored among all people everywhere. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently and deliberately and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. And so today is the chosen day for us to celebrate the union of Matthew Suggs and Emma Denny in marriage. And I invite you all to feel perfectly free to smile, to laugh, to enjoy the pleasure and the privilege that we have today to witness this wonderful celebration of their love. My duty requires me to ask a very important question. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Matthew and Emma, as we worked on the details for this great day, you told me that we'd have a very special group of people here to celebrate with you. And because you have such good friends and so many family members, I have an important question to ask each of them today. Do you, as parents, family members, and friends, give your blessing and support to Matt and Emma to be joined together in marriage? If so, please respond with a very warm, it's about time. It's about time. <laughs> Wonderful. Would you all please take your seats? Emma and Matt, I know you really appreciate having your family and friends with you here today. And some very special people standing up here in support of you, your bridesmaids and your groomsmen. Emma, I love how you have chosen to not have a maid or matron of honor because all of these beautiful ladies are your best friends in some way. And so your bestest friends, Elizabeth, Indalia, Courtney, Christina, and Mo. And Matthew, your best friend, your brother, your best man, your mentor, your boss, and great guy, <laughs> Michael, and your groomsmen, Andy, Craig, Sean, and Andrew. I see you over there, Andrew. <laughs> Each one is very special to you with a lot of good memories and a lot more to come. Matt and Emma, you have some loved ones that were not able to be here to celebrate with you. And we know that you're thinking of them right now in this moment, and your thoughts honor them and keep them alive in your hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to celebrate the love that Matthew and Emma have for each other. What do we mean by love? To love is to enter a whole new world, a world of togetherness, a world of sharing all that is dearest and deepest within your hearts. To love is to remember and keep alive forever all those unique qualities that drew you to one another in the beginning. And to love is to come 
together from the pathways of your past and then move forward hand in hand along the uncharted roads of your future, ready to risk, to dream, and to dare. And to always believe that all things are possible when you have faith in God and love for each other. To make your marriage work, it will take love. Love should be the core of your marriage. Love is the reason you are here. And love is the reason we're all here today. In fact, Matthew and Emma, God created marriage in the way that you love each other to be a small earthly picture of the relationship between Christ and his church. That just as Christ loved, he wants you to love one another passionately. Just as he forgave, he wants you to forgive one another recklessly. And just as he served, he wants you to serve one another selflessly. As you paint this beautiful picture of love and forgiveness and servanthood together, may you be blessed and may God get all the glory. Matt and Emma, the commitment of marriage is one of the most important decisions you will ever make in your life. The vow of marriage is a pledge to each other of a lifetime of love. You're committing to share all that life has to offer, the good times and the bad times with patience and understanding. And for your marriage to remain strong, the trials and tribulations of everyday life must not shake your faith in each other but beyond the love and respect you share there must be a strong sense of commitment and loyalty and a willingness to understand and accept each other's strengths and weaknesses you must have an openness and a willingness to communicate with each other to be great friends who really like each other as well as love each other so at this time could you take both of her hands in yours So how did their love story begin? They first knew of each other in junior high. His locker was next to her friend's locker, and Emma remembers saying hi to him, and he basically said nothing and bolted out of there. She wasn't interested in him at the time and was just trying to be friendly. So her first impressions of him were that he's not very outgoing and friendly, and so she probably thought he was kind of a jerk. His first impressions of her was that he thought she was really cool and pretty, but he was always intimidated by her, so he never found the courage to talk to her. They became close in their junior year in high school. She was in art class, and he had a homeroom period where he would go into the classroom to get his things, and he would make extra effort to go up to her desk and to hang for a few minutes. Their first date was in January of 2008, and they were high school seniors. They went to a Mexican restaurant. They even remember what they ordered. She had nachos, and he had enchiladas. (laughs) He recalls being very nervous. He wanted her to be attracted to him, And so he was panic cleaning his house before she got over there. He made sure to have a sleeveless shirt on and was vacuuming when she came over. He wanted her to see his muscles a bit. But she may have been more attracted to seeing him cleaning. She did say it was the first time she saw his guns. And she admitted she was impressed. In those days, he used to have long, wild hair and always wore a sweatband. Hello, 1980s. He somehow pulled it off, though. Part of what drew her to Matt was that he was a pretty unique person. They started hanging out from this point on, and they officially became a couple a few weeks later when they were hanging out in her parents' basement, where he says to her, so are we like dating or what? And her response was, I don't know, are we? His approach may have not have been that smooth, but he got her done, and they both agreed they were dating. They loved to travel together, 
and experience cool and interesting places. They love being with their dogs. They love to run together. As a matter of fact, they ran several uh, endurance races together, and Emma pretty much always beats Matt. She is confidently competitive, and he is secretively competitive. He would be fine with losing those marathons to her if she didn't talk so much smack about it. <laughs> An example of her competitive nature was when she taught Matt to play tennis. And one time he was beating her, and she became so frustrated that she broke her racket. <laughs> he told her recently that she is the most intensive person, intense person he'd ever met by far. They are balancing each other out, though. He's finding his own competitive side now, and she's calmed down a bit in hers. He's becoming more open-minded to her psychotic and off-the-wall ideas. <laughs> he helps her to calm down by recognizing it in her and calling her on it. How did Matt propose to Emma? So we fast forward to October 2018. They ran their first 50-mile ultra marathon together, and her mom, Janelle, was with them. They started at 6 a.m. and finished around 8 p.m., and, quote, sweating like some kind of a farm animal. <laughs> His plan all along was to propose to her at the end of the marathon, and he had hidden the ring in the bottom of his hydration pack. And he would feel the bottom of it every hour or so just to make sure it was still there. And to be honest, he said the ending was what was carrying him through the whole thing. At mile 30, she had said she was struggling pretty hard. And he, being fueled by the upcoming proposal, was trotting along. However, towards the end, she had gotten her wind again, and she took off ahead. There's a part of her that always wants to beat him. And so she left him around mile 48, and she sprinted the last two miles. <laughs> Matt was okay with this because it gave him time to retrieve the ring from his backpack. And so Emma gets to the end, sweaty. Her family didn't see her cross the finish line because it was dark. She had placed second place in her age group and was crying because she was overcome with emotion from having finished and placed Five minutes later, Matt and Janelle come through, also sweaty. Emma's holding her award and was so excited to show it to him. And Matt squats down like every other person that has just ran for 14 hours. And so she's trying to show him the award and he's trying to show her the ring. And she's not understanding why he's not responding to the award. And he's not understanding why she's not responding to the ring. And they were like that for 10 long seconds or so before she noticed the ring. And then she totally forgot about the award and at this point is speechless and stunned. He asked her to marry him and she said, say it with me, yes. <laughs> as, about, as he is about to put the ring on her, her thoughts went to, shoot, it might not fit because the fingers swell when running a marathon. <laughs> but he was able to get it on her finger, though. What is it that Emma especially loves and appreciates about Matt? She appreciates him always being an endless source of support and hope to her, and for always being ready for whatever wild ride she wants to throw him on. He is loyal, open-minded, caring, fun-loving, and unaffected by other people's opinions. He is the type of person most people search a lifetime for, and she was just lucky enough to find him at 17. She wants to thank him for being him. She loves you, Matt. What is it that Matthew especially loves and appreciates about Emma? He loves her drive and determination. 
If there's something she truly wants or decides to do, she is going to do it, to do everything in her power to obtain that goal, whatever it may be. She has a fantastic work ethic. When it comes time to put the work in, she does it with severe intensity that he's seen no place else. She inspires him daily to be a better person in all aspects of life. She is the reason he is who he is today. As for future plans, the couple will honeymoon in Utah and Arizona, visiting lots of national parks and fun spots like that. And they also plan to grow their family through many rescue pets over the years. <laughs> Matt and Emma, I challenge you to love with the greatest kind of love there is, unconditional love. It's easy to love someone who does nice things for you. It's also pretty easy to love someone you respect and admire. But there is something that goes far beyond the words, I love you if, or I love you because. Unconditional love says to the other person, I love you anyway, and I will love you always, no matter what. Now this is the rarest love of all, and it is certainly the one that has the most risk. But no marriage can last without it. It should never be getting light, given lightly, and once it's given, it should never be withdrawn. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we ask God to forgive us in the same way that we forgive one another. Matt and Emma, unfortunately, neither of you are perfect. You will each make mistakes. But unconditional love says to the other person, I forgive you, I still love you, and I will stay with you the rest of my life. Matt and Emma, you've now chosen to exchange your wedding vows. Matthew, as you look into the eyes of this beautiful woman, please share these vows and truths to her repeating each phrase after me. I Matthew. I Matthew. Take you Emma. Take you Emma. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. Sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Emma, without letting go of this wonderful man, as you look into his eyes, please share these vows and truths to him. I, Emma. I, Emma. Take you, Matt. Take you, Matt. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For rich, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Traditionally, the marking of the passage to the status of husband and wife is noted by the exchange of rings. And these are powerful statements of love, a seal upon your wedding vows. Let them mark you as husband and wife and wear them with joy. They are gifts as you are gifts to each other. They are circular in their shape, a symbol of permanence, completeness, wholeness, and fullness, a symbol of the unbroken circle of love. May these rings always remind you of the vows that you have just made. Matthew, please take this ring and place it on Emma's finger and then repeat each phrase after me. With this ring, with this ring, I thee wed, I thee wed, I give it to you, I give it to you, as a symbol of our vows symbol of our vows with all that I am with all that I am and all that I have and all that I have I give myself to you I give myself to you Emma will you take this ring place it on Matthew's finger and then repeat each phrase after me with this ring with this ring I thee wed I thee wed I give it to you I give it to you as a symbol of our vows with all that I am, with all that I am, and all that I have, and all that I have, I give myself, I to, give you. myself to you. Now, family members and friends, you've just witnessed Matthew and Emma exchange their vows and rings. Will you be responsible to help them fulfill their vows? When times are tough and you see one of them wavering, will you actively help them 
not just in words, but come alongside of them. When anniversaries come up, will you celebrate with them? Maybe not show up at their house. <laughs> you are here today because you are important to them. They invite you to be on this journey with them. And if you will help them to stay married and to strengthen their marriage, please respond by shouting a resounding, we will. We will. All right. <laughs> Let us ask God for his continued blessings upon Matt and Emma. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for these two people who are just smitten with each other. Love is your creation and they know it full well for each other. And so, Father, I pray your blessings upon them. Bless everything they do, everything they set their hands to. Bless, bless their love for as long as they live upon this earth, Lord, and may it draw glory to you and your creation. In Jesus' name, and amen. Now, before I pronounce you as husband and wife, I have just one more thing I want you to do. Your wedding day is one thing that seems to fly by. And it's a day filled with emotions and friends and rings and dances. And m many people remember how fleeting their own wedding day was. So I want you to take a few seconds and I want you to look into each other's eyes. And I want you to think about the happiness that you're feeling right now in this place, in this moment. And really let that register in your heart and your mind. Matthew and Emma, you have vowed your vows, you have promised your promises, and exchanged your wedding rings. Therefore, in the presence of God and these witnesses, I now you de declare you to be husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no one separate. I now invite you both to seal this day with a kiss worthy of this great occasion. Matthew, you may kiss your bride. It is now my privilege to present to you for the very first time as they begin their new life together as husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Matthew Suggs. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome everyone right here to this wonderful celebration tonight. It's also my pleasure to introduce tonight's wedding party. 
If you guys could please direct your attention towards the front entranceway, it's my pleasure to introduce the parents of the bride that's here for Jay and Janelle Denny. Come on, take a little walk with me, baby, and tell me who do you love. And next up, guys, we have a nice round of applause for the groom's parents. Let's hear it for Mike Suggs and Susie Ritchie. Next up, guys, we have tonight's wedding party, our first couple. We need a nice big round of applause for bridesmaid Mo Curry and groomsman Andrew Suggs. Next up, guys, nice big round of applause for bridesmaid Christina O'Leary and groomsman Sean McGloin. And our next couple, ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for bridesmaid Courtney Rieger and groomsman Craig DeLiggy. And keep that applause going, everybody. Next up, we have our bridesmaid, Dahlia Burner, and groomsman, Andy DeLiggy. Next up, guys, we did a nice big, big round of applause for bridesmaid, Elizabeth Gaynor, and our best man, Michael Suggs, everybody. This time, guys, we need everyone to please rise from your seats. Put those hands in a nice and loud, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise for the bride and groom. Let's hear it for them. It's my pleasure to introduce the bride and groom, Emma and Matthew. Yeah, I got a tombstone head, a graveyard man. Just 22, baby, I don't mind dying. Snake skin shoes, baby, put them on your feet. Got the good time music with the boat in the beat. Jay and myself, we'd like to thank all of you for coming. All of you are either family, friends, friends that have become family over the years, and um, we just want to thank you for being here for them. The last 11 months of my life have been spent planning this six hours that we're spending here tonight. <laughs> so it is my hope that everyone has a wonderful time, most especially Emma and Matt, but this was planned for all of you that we invited to. Um, I wanted to make sure that we had a wonderful evening planned for everyone. We hope that you all leave here with a full belly, um, lots of great memories, possibly waking up tomorrow with a little bit of a headache because you had a little too much to drink, but it's there for you to do so. Um, again, we thank everyone for being a part of our lives. You all mean so, so much to each and every one of us um, that invited you here tonight. And um, we just hope that this is everything that you hoped it would be. And I hope for Emma and Matt and all the bridal party that this is exactly the night that you had hoped for. And I pray that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful life together. We, we have our art teachers here. My art teacher, Emma, Matt's art teachers. I'm not sure where they're at. Where You went home? All right. I want to thank you guys for everything you've done for us, for myself, for Matt, for Emma. We are here right now, and it's a lot because of you. 
I appreciate that. You guys kept us straight and narrow. Thank you. I really, yeah, you tried. You did a good job. And now here they are. They're here, and it's a lot because of you. They met in your, well, sort of met in your class, junior year. You guys started dating. The whole story that Ed told that I was going to talk about. But uh, that's that. So, so I'm going to go off of Ed's cleaning story that he was talking about, where Matt was cleaning our condo. Okay? He says cleaning, right? So what Matt thinks cleaning is, let's, let's use bathrooms for example. I come home and there's no toilet seats. All right? So I'm like, oh, that's great. Matt's, Matt's cleaning the bathrooms. So then I go to the dishwasher. Oh, yeah. The sink is empty. And there are no toilet seats. I open the dishwasher. Oh, yeah. Cups, forks, knives, and a couple toilet seats. So now at this point, I mean, how do you explain that to his girlfriend that's coming over? He cleaned the house. I mean, I'm like, we got to get this shit on now. We got to get these toilet seats on now. And, and we did. We got him on, and uh, wow, that's, that's him cleaning. So, so that's, uh, that's excellent. Um, I, I want to tell you, first of all, that there was an over-under three and a half minutes on whether I was going to cry or not during this speech. We're at about two minutes. So whoever took the over, you're looking good, all right? So, so these two, they brought me to my first half marathon. And I'm like, oh, 13 miles? How? That's not hard. I could do that. I came out of that gate hard. <laughs> 7, 30, 8-minute mile. Then it was like 8, 30. I'm way ahead of these two guys, right? 9 minutes, 9, 30. <laughs> well, then here comes Matt and Emma. Sure enough, they're right behind me. And they pass me like I'm standing still completely smoke me. I mean, they beat me by a couple miles. It, it kind, kind of embarrassing. Yeah, well, yeah, more than that. So, so then we come up with the idea, uh, marathons are probably a good idea. So we start running marathons together. I mean, several, nine, I think Matt and I ran nine, Emma, Janelle, we're all running these marathons, okay? And this past April, going on oh, 10 years later, Nothing has changed. I come out of the gate hard, I'm running, and mile 13, here we go, there's Matt, he passes me. Mile 20, yeah, Emma passes me. And uh, once again, they impress me. They... <laughs> All right, 15 more seconds, hold on, hold on. <laughs> They have impressed me since the day I saw them two together. And I couldn't be more proud of both of you. And I'm so proud to pass that baton over to Emma because I'm so sick of wiping his ass. <laughs> I love you so much. And you know that. Thank you all for coming. Like Janelle said, kind of echo that. Thank you for coming out. All you guys are very special to us. It means a lot. You can make the time to come out, have fun with us, party with us, cut some rug with us. It's going to be awesome. Um, everything's going off without a hitch. Uh, our dogs had a little, little mishap, but they're good. Yeah, it was the best part. It was a great part. So, like I said, short and simple. Love everybody in here. Thank you for coming out. Let's have a good time. Thank you to Janelle for spending so much of her time and putting together an awesome night. So thank you so much. Love you guys. Thank you. There'll be days like this When there's no one complaining There'll be days like this When everything falls into place Like the flick of a switch Oh, my mama told me There'll be days like this you don't need to worry 
There'll be days like this When no one's in a hurry There'll be days like this When all the parts of the puzzle Start to look like they should Then I must remember There'll be days like this When you don't need an answer There'll be days like this When you don't meet a chance sir, There'll be days like this When you don't get the trade By that old Judas kiss And I must remember There'll be days like this Once again, ladies and gentlemen, have a nice round of applause for Matt, his new mother-in-law, Janelle right there. And for this next one, we need Emma to come out to the dance floor. She'd like to share a special dance with her dad. So we need Emma and her dad to come out to the dance floor for this next one. How about a nice round of applause, guys, for Emma and her dad, the father-daughter dance, everybody. the father-daughter dance out there tonight, guys. We've been 
Again, ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause? Let's hear it for Matt and his mom, the mother Sundance out there tonight, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, dancing for the first time as husband and wife. Nice and loud, make some noise for the bride and groom, Emma and Matt. Congratulations, guys.
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the bride and groom. Let's hear it for Emma and Matt. Congratulations, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we need a nice big round of applause. Let's hear it for Emma, Matt, and their wedding party tonight. Kicking those things off right here. Congratulations, Emma and Matt. Come on out to the dance floor. 